you know that standardizing production processes is a key driver for achieving operational excellence, but managers' work should also be standardized. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And today we will be talking about the leader's work standards. So if you are a manager in any manufacturing setting, but even outside of that, right? Any manager of processes and people should also standardize their own work. It will get you great benefits. And this will sort of, towards the end of the video, also lead into the performance control system, daily management system that is part of the standardization, really not everything, part of it, big part of it. And so the link to that, I would like to point you in the direction of a couple of very nice free courses to extend your learning on continuous improvement that I found over at Belt Courses. Link is in the description below, uh, including a very nice one on specifically this one, making the daily management system really part of what the leader does as a big part of the standardization of their work. But let's dive into you know, all of those things that when you manage a group of people and uh, some processes, you will most surely find your calendar filled with all kinds of things. And I will say, if you do not block your calendar, your calendar will block your work and your effectiveness. So make sure to block, and we'll get into that these are two similar ways, different but similar things, block your calendar yourself. So that means, one, be active, take control of your calendar, but immediately also to blocking your calendar, do it in blocks, do it in blocks with a specific purpose. That'll help you a lot. So this practical advice right off the top of the video, put blocks in your calendar for specific types of work. Some of these will be very specific. Attend the morning meeting from half eight till nine. Others will be not as specific, but still block things like this is time for uh, my talks with my one-on-ones with, with, with my own team, things like that, right? Or this is a block of time for handling email. Now the type of activities that, uh, and you can extend the list, you can change some of the words, but that you will generally find in a manager's day. And now I'm talking specifically about the, the sort of middle and direct line manager's layer, right? We're not talking about the C-suite here, we're talking about a production manager or a quality manager, people like that in an operational setting. And what you see is that you know, a big part of your work should be coaching your direct team, but the people directly around you, and especially your own team of subordinates, those are the people that rely on you for feedback, for growth, for coaching, for target setting, for all kinds of things like that, right? So this, this is not coaching in the narrow sense of the word that uh, you coach them just in their career and personal growth. No, this is just the work of a leader of people. Directly improving the work of your team, developing your system. So yes, you can also develop the people, but that's sort of in the coaching, right? Develop the work, develop the systems that you have. So these are improvement programs that you do in a factory. These are also restructurings of procedures, work instructions, making sure that the work that you and your team and your department that they do it becomes better, more efficient, and that you get a new machine into there. All of those things are all developing your work setting. And they've got controlling your work setting. Again, this is usually not so much the control of people, but even there, you do control that they do the work according to the work standards. That's also a lot about that KPI type of mentality, right? So making sure that the performance of your department, of your lines, of your groups of people, that that is at the required levels. Troubleshooting, especially when control shows that things go wrong, I mean, something goes wrong uh, in the factory and you go and fix it. Something goes wrong because somebody didn't show up and you make sure that things are dealt, dealt with and that yeah, somebody else takes that place or somehow you troubleshoot and you make things right again. This can also be for a number of days uh, chasing after why doesn't this machine work? How do we fix it and get it up and running again? Meeting others. So there, there will be plenty of meetings in here. Right? If you do troubleshooting, generally a root cause analysis meeting. 
if you do the control, there is a performance control meeting, uh, the development that requires your improvement team meetings, coaching, one-on-one -on -one meetings. But meetings are meetings are one of the big things for a manager. Uh, we, we can say that we want fewer meetings for our managers, for our leaders, but you should remember that a manager, especially once you get to that middle or higher level, your main way of working is meeting with other people, spreading the direction, the strategy, uh, taking the work, combining things, feeding back. Th those are all meeting type of activities. So it's not bad having meetings, but meetings for others, that is one of the things already that many managers will complain about. Because what I mean here is you will be invited to meetings that are not really for driving the performance of your department, but other people sort of need you as well, right? So the, the quality department also wants you to be in the quality assessment meeting because it's an important part for quality to have production involved in the quality assessment, the risk assessment, the all kinds of things. But while that is important for the business, it might not really drive your goals in the best way. So that, those are meetings for others. I'm not saying quit them because some of them really are important for the business, but do know that, that that can quickly become a time sink as well. So other people blocking your calendar. And then uh, there is generally a whole bunch of administrative work. And it goes from taking care of your hour slips uh, for, for your team, but also uh, handling email. Email has a whole bunch of these things in it, but the actual handling of the email is basically administration. And you're just trying to get things in and out. Uh, checking how well the KPIs were, sending a report off to higher management, all kinds of things. A lot of admin stuff in here, vacation requests from your team. That is all in sort of the broad categories that of work that you will see as a manager. Now, there is a big distinction here that I think we, we should make, especially for operational managers. You have got a factory or something like that to run, and your main priority is the performance, the effectiveness of that department. Now, this will be the same in any type of operation, any type of making industry, even if it is service-based. But the thing is, when your factory runs well, you did sort of 80, 90% of your job well. Of course, you should also make sure that it runs well tomorrow and next year, for that you will need to do development of people and keeping them and things like that. But when it runs well, that is your main task. But there is this bit of a split here. So we wanted to run well today and do things today, and we wanted to run well tomorrow. And that is that split. So when we do this performance control, this troubleshooting, the admin, meeting others, honestly, is a little bit of, I don't know, I don't know if it's even in here, but we work in the business. We are part of the processes that make everything run smoothly. Yes, even those control things, they are part of the business. It's an important part that we've got managers and leaders doing the controlling, doing the troubleshooting, although if we can delegate that, it would be even better. But know that you are working just in the sort of the daily grind. We might think that that is a very negative word and thing to do, but do remember it is, it is just important. If your factory doesn't run nicely today, then there is no tomorrow to be concerned about, right? So working in the business. or working on the business. And what that means is you work on improving all those processes. So when you coach your people, develop your processes and your systems, you are making sure that tomorrow things will be better. Right? You are improving things. That working in the current processes, this is working on all of those processes, on those resources, making things better. You need a balance between these. When you get lower in the management skills. So a frontline manager will be doing a lot of working in the business. 
And when you get to the CEO level, you should be doing a lot of working on the business. And if you cannot distinguish between those two, you will never get into the CEO positions anyway. That is an important part to do. Now, a very practical tip for operational managers. If you're thinking of how am I going to block my calendar, think about trying to get your mornings for working in the business and your afternoons for working on the business. I know it's not 100% effective, but it will help you so much in planning your daily and weekly calendar. Really, this shortcut, mornings are for working in the business, afternoons are for working on the business. Use that as your baseline. Big tip. So how does that look? You just take your week and you say, look, I want to be in my morning daily control system, right? My, my performance control meeting that we have in the morning, uh, the guys down at the line, they had their shift handover, and then they do a presentation of the performance, but also some of the, uh, the hurdles, uh, some of the things that need to be fixed, and we discuss who's gonna fix what, where the priorities are. Important meeting for me to be control. Then from such performance control meetings, and probably you'll have to, right? So most likely a bit later, if you're the production manager a bit later in the morning, I would definitely still keep it in the morning. So the mid morning is 10 o'clock. That is an ideal time to have your production meeting. So sort of, sort of your factory meeting, right? So where different areas come together, we discuss what's the priority for the maintenance organization today and where do we need to focus our attention. The earlier morning meeting, you should not have to be there, but quite often a production manager would like to be there to coach their people, to develop the systems, but also just to be in direct connection with some of the departments. So that they can happen at the same time. You just go to one of them on Monday, another one on, on Wednesday, and things like that. You put them in the calendar. Now, those meetings, and especially the one that you chair, or the one where you are a presenter, they will very often identify problems that need to be troubleshot, right? that need to be solved. So plan some time in your calendar for troubleshooting stuff. If you have that meeting at 10, and it's supposed to last you know, 15 minutes, something like that, maybe 20, book the rest of the time up until 11, or if you wanna leave some room for your people to first fix things, book a time slot from 11.30 till 12, specifically for troubleshooting. So you never plan meetings there, because you free up the time for helping with the troubleshooting that came out of these performance meetings, these performance gaps, these problems that were identified, and make sure that you just have that block available. Maybe you even make it 11 till 12 if you take a full hour, if you think that you, know, you need to help quite often. For, uh, let's say, a continuous improvement specialist, or a TPM manager, or somebody of that likes production and uh, maintenance engineers, I would recommend doing the same. So you might even want to make this sort of a rule for your whole production organization, your operation, to have that maybe even just 11 till 12 is off limits for anyone to plan standing meetings. And a standing meeting is not where you all stand. A standing meeting is one that always repeats in your calendar, right? Like the, the 10 o'clock meeting that we used in the example, that is a standing meeting. It's like every, every day that meeting happens, uh, no matter what. But even a team meeting is sort of a standing meeting. If it happens every week on Tuesday at three o'clock, that, that is uh, one of those recurring standing meetings. You don't allow those for a specific amount of time, for instance, 11 till 12, because when there is a problem, that is the time where people can be plucked together. The problems are identified in one of those control meetings, you immediately want to gather a couple of people and get onto it. If there is no problem that requires a person's attention today, they can use it for email if they like. They can use it for all kinds of things. People have plenty of work outside of meetings, managers, other people. There is plenty of work to put into that hour. You're just not allowed to already spend it for somebody else, right? Up until about five minutes before that time, Somebody can come to you and say, I need your help on machine 15 because the axle broke in such a way that we just don't understand how it happened. Yeah. Okay, drop stuff, go. 
So that is for working in the business. You plan such blocks. You also plan your control rounds, your gamba rounds, things like that. You plan a whole bunch of meetings, but plan these sort of, sort of last. Then try to get also blocks set up. So set up your, maybe even daily if you're in a production organization, or as weekly, but with your team leads, with your direct reports, you want to have those coaching moments. Set them up recurring in your calendar, even if it's just like a half hour every week. It's just generally you plan those in the afternoon. If you work in production, you know, your team leads, your supervisors, they will also be busy with sort of the same here, right? They also need to make sure that today's production is running. They need to work in the business. So plan some time for them around their own calendars. So this is, but this is an important thing. If you want to have this, this operational team together, plan and synchronize the managers calendars and I would say production gets the lead in that because if we're running a manufacturing organization the production department that is what makes the money right? that's what it is about so what the maintenance team or the quality team would like to have in their calendars is subordinate to what the production organization needs you have the the cadence of production with what the supervisors, the team leaders, how they should steer that. That controls the coaching, the operators, controlling the processes. That is the first thing you build in. On top of that, you put for those supervisors, team leaders, what the production manager does, right? So you, you take that production manager, operations manager's calendar and sort of overlay that. Then you get to the support departments. For the manager's day, you might feel the busiest, but the way you can block your time and, and organize your day is the freest. If you block your calendar instead of letting other people block it for you, right? Because these ones will uh, completely eat your calendar. And when your CEO says, no, no, but I now want the 11 to 12 meeting, you should say, no, not, not, not for anyone in operations because we already blocked it in bottom up. And this is an important thing. Get this around your key performing elements. But plan those coachings, plan those improvement meetings, if you can, into your afternoons. But for the people in the day shift, right? If you are working with shift patterns, you will also probably have a shift change around one or two or three o'clock in the afternoon if you do three shifts a day. So take that into account. I know there's a lot of practicalities, but the main message is still there. You block blocks in your calendar with the different type of words and put a big focus on getting this one right. In fact, the order that they are in is not picked at random. This is the order of importance. Now, starting with the most important thing doesn't always work. As discussed, get those control and troubleshooting things in the morning when your team comes in, when you get you take stock of what happens in your factory, you need to react today. But you plan coaching moments, feedback moments, just discussion moments, plan it in, make sure that they happen. Improvement of the processes, of the equipment. Make sure it happens. Control meetings. Make sure it happens. It is more important as a manager that you ensure a good performance control routine than that you are a good troubleshooter. If you as a manager, coming from a good engineering background, get sucked into all the problem-solving teams, sorry to tell you, but you're not such a good manager. Right? That is not the job of a manager. Making sure that this all happens in a correct way so that performance is controlled and really is there and the performance of your department, your process is improved and your people can do that. That is the work of a true manager, a true leader that grows their business. So all of these, they revolve around making sure that your personal calendar, 
the blocks of time you put in your day and your week, they're also standardized. And that all of these things flow into certain work standards around which you will have freedom. But block them and become part of the operational machine. It'll really help you a lot. And you see actually in this, there is quite a big part of the daily management system also, right? The performance control system, the daily management system. And if you want to get a nice extra learning on that one, head over to Belt Courses, links down below, because the team there, they have done some very nice, they have a really nice big training program as well. That is a paid program, well worth it. Probably you would like to do that with your company, company backing. So discuss it with your manager, with your HR, if you're interested in that. But for now, you know, take one of their nice mini courses. They have been collecting some resources from the web, you know, some of the videos. They also collected some of my videos and that's sort of the roundabout way that I came uh, in contact with them. But they put them together in very nicely curated blocks, bit of theory, couple of videos, put it into a sequence, questions to trigger your thinking, to really learn what you have just been watching and what you have just been reading. Put that into a very nice resource for learning. So I, I highly recommend you go check it out. It is absolutely free and uh, I just love their work. So I'll probably be referring some more of their work in future videos. But okay, head over there, continue your learning. Also continue your own continuous improvement journey.